From being a savior of a franchise to being the villain twice, Derek Carr has had one heck of a journey. From the career highs to check down lows, you either love him or you hate him. Who's to blame for the fruit of Derek Carr's career? Will he ever lead the team to the Super Bowl, or is he plainly overrated? So many questions loom over his career. He has had a dozen different coaches and coordinators, and he has had many teammates go to prison or go psycho on his teams. Is he the common denominator, or is it the fault of his environment? Today, we aim to answer these questions. I was a big fan of yours. I was a big fan of you coming out. Oh, thank you. That really means a lot, Coach. I would have taken it, but I just take it out. Yeah, oh, yes, sir. Well, I appreciate it. I really do. That means a lot. Imagine if Andy Reid drafted Derek Carr, how different his career would be. We can dive into that further in another video, but the thought of DC having a better environment may change our view of him as a player. Rewinding to 2022, the Las Vegas Raiders were considered one of the biggest threats in the AFC before the start of the season. Derek Carr was coming off a strong campaign in 2021, leading his team a 10-7 record in a roller coaster season of dramatic events. In the offseason, they traded for his college teammate and superstar receiver, Devontae Adams. However, not even in a full season after the duo was reunited, genius Josh McDaniels would bench DC, and it was clear that his time as a face of the Raiders had come to an abrupt end. Did Daniels sabotage Derek Carr, or was Carr the root problem? Now with the Saints, fans in New Orleans are booing him. Have Raiders fans and Saint fans overestimated the quarterback that Derek Carr is? The once promising gunslinger was one of the only bright spots of the Raiders for a long time. He has earned much respect from the players throughout the league, but has also gained enemies. Let's start from the beginning. On March 28, 1991, Derek Dallas Carr was born in Bakersfield, California. His parents, Roger and Shirley, raised him with his brothers, David and Darren Carr. Young Derek grew up watching his older brother David Carr break records for the Fresno State Bulldogs as the team's quarterback for getting drafted number one overall by the Houston Texans in the 2002 NFL Draft. Derek knew immediately that he wanted to follow in his brother's footsteps. Derek initially attended Clemens High School in Sugarland, Texas. He would first see some action in his sophomore season throwing 1,246 yards and 12 touchdowns. In his junior year, he led his team 13-0 record, throwing 1,622 yards and 16 touchdowns. After the season, he transferred to Bakersfield Christian High School back in California. His final high school season, Carr led BC to a 12-1 record, throwing 4,067 yards and 46 touchdowns. Despite his play on the field, he would remain under the radar and be overlooked by scouts around the country. ESPN gave him a scout grade of 78 out of 100, ranking him 30th best quarterback in his class. While he would receive some attention from Boise State, SMU, UCLA, USC, and Utah, he would commit to Fresno State as they were the only one of the three major schools to offer him a scholarship. Carr would once again have to earn his spot on the field at Fresno State similar to how he did in high school. He only played in five games and threw 14 passes in his freshman season. However, he earned the starting nod as a sophomore after being redshirted in the 2010 season. In the 2011 season, he threw for 3,544 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. While these are solid stats, they resulted in little team success. Fresno State struggled their way with a 4-9 record. However, things would begin to turn around for the team with an addition of Devontae Adams as the team's new number one receiver. Carr and Adams would almost immediately become one of the most dangerous duos in all of college football. In 2012, Carr would make a huge leap throwing 4,104 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions, earning him the Mountain West Conference Offense Player of the Year award. Fresno State was a co-champion of the conference and ended the season with a 9-4 record. His best win of the year came in June 29, 2012, when Derek married his college sweetheart, Heather Neal. In 2013, Carr's senior season would put him on the map as one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He finished his year with an elite 5,083 yards, 50 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. Once again, winning the Mountain West Offense Player of the Year award, Fresno State would end their season as Mountain West champions with an impressive 11-2 record. The year wasn't all easy for Carr. He and his wife faced one of the scariest moments in their lives when their newborn son was diagnosed with intestinal malrotation. The doctors said that little Dallas may not make it, but the Carr family kept their trust in the Lord, and through a lot of prayer, God answered 
Dallas made it, and the Carr family praised God for the ultimate healing in the Valley Children's Hospital for caring for their son. Upon entering the draft, scouts were very high on Carr's athleticism, arm talent, and leadership abilities. However, there were some concerns about whether his fame would hold up in the NFL, his tendency to make ill-advised decisions rather than giving up on a play, and if he would still be able to play at high level against NFL caliber talent. NFL.com ranked him as the third best quarterback in the class in terms of college production, fourth in terms of athleticism, and second overall in his position. He would be picked early in the second round with the 36th overall pick by the Oakland Raiders, the fourth quarterback taken after Blake Bortles, Johnny Menzel, and Teddy Bridgewater. Carr entered his rookie season as the backup to Matt Schaub, but through the preseason, he outplayed Schaub. He showed enough promise to be named the starter by the Raiders head coach, Dennis Allen. Once thrust into the starting role, he threw 3,270 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions, leading the talent barren team to a 3-13 record. However, he would make a huge jump in his second season. Jack Del Rio was the new head coach for the team. Carr would throw 3,987 yards, 32 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. This would earn him the first appearance in the Pro Bowl while leading the Raiders to a 7-9 record. The 2016 season would arguably be the best of Carr's entire career. Before being injured on Christmas Eve in Week 16, Carr left the Raiders eventually 33-25 win over the Indianapolis Colts in the fourth quarter after suffering a fibula fracture. He was in the talks of being named the league MVP before the injury and was sadly unable to play in the postseason. He greatly improved his efficiency as a passer, throwing only six interceptions along with 28 touchdowns. He finished third in MVP voting while leading the team to a 12-3 record. A big factor why Derek Carr lacks winning success is the lack of environmental stability in the front office and coaching staff. The Raiders have notoriously hired and fired coaches for decades, whether self-inflicted or not. The volatility has made it hard for players to develop and thrive. John Gruden was named the new head coach by Mark Davis in 2018. Another rebuild the team endured while Carr was on the lone constant. It wasn't until 2021 season that he finally got another chance to see the playoffs. In the season, he threw 4,804 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions, setting a career high in passing yards. The Raiders finished the season with a 10-7 record, earning them the second playoff berth with Carr as their starting quarterback. What was more impressive was what Carr and the entire team overcame. The NFL bullied Mark Davis into firing John Gruden midway through the season, resulting in Rich Bisaccia taking over as interim coach. They matched up against the eventual AFC West Championship Cincinnati Bengals in the wild card round. However, they'd be sent home in a tight 1926 loss. Despite the loss in the first round of the postseason, this was still a very promising season for Carr and the Raiders, and things would look even better for all parties in the offseason when a blockbuster trade added Devontae Adams to the roster. The duo would pick right up where they left off at Fresno State, and adding Adams would make Las Vegas a true contender in the AFC. However, this would be far from the case. While Carr and Adams connected somewhat statistically, more was needed to lead a real team to success. In the 2022 season, the Raiders would struggle to a 6-9 record with Carr as a starter. Carr wasn't playing well in the McDaniels system. He struggled greatly even to the point of crying in a presser after the season was not meeting the expectations that they had hoped. In the week leading up to his benching, he threw only 174 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions in a 10-13 loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. His final game in silver and black. It was clear that his time as the Raiders franchise quarterback had ended as Mark Davis was fully committed to the new regime. When speaking about this incredibly tough stretch of his career, Carr said, I was very upset. I was mad. You spend nine years in a place, you have all the records, and you can play at a high level. For something to get in the way, whether it was whatever reason, money related or whatever injury related, I would have said, I don't even want the money. I just want to play two more times in front of our fans. I didn't get that opportunity. So I definitely lit a fire inside me to keep going. Once they made my wife cry, it was pretty much over. While Carr's nine years with the Raiders would only result in two trips to the playoffs, 
It was very tough to blame him for the lack of team success amidst the leadership turnover every other year. He would end his nearly decade-long tenure with a team with four Pro Bowl appearances, 35,222 yards, 217 touchdowns, and 99 interceptions. He is statistically one of the best quarterbacks in Raider history and still holds the franchise records for completion percentage, passing yards, and passing touchdowns. However, in the 2023 offseason, it was clear that the relationship between him and the team had completely dissolved and he would be off to a new team. Early in free agency, he signed a four-year, $150 million deal with $100 million guaranteed and $60 million fully guaranteed at signing. The Saints had top-tier weapons and running back Alvin Kamara and wide receivers Chris Olave and Michael Thomas. They also had something DC never had with the Raiders, a strong defense. Along with this, the NFC South was the weak division. It was wide open entering the season, with none of the four teams standing out as clear front runners. When talking about coming to New Orleans, Carr threw some shots at his old team saying, I'm happy to be somewhere where we're in a stable organization. That's been proven for years, and I hope that the Raiders find something good there too, where they can keep this ability for the next guys because I know how important it is and I care about my old teammates. Carr immediately stepped into the Saints starting quarterback as he held onto the job despite the cryptic backlash from many of his teammates who once initially welcomed him with open arms. The expectations for the 2023 season were high for the Saints. DC finally had a team around him that would allow him to shine, but the fruit of the season has been turmoil. It doesn't look like Carr will make it through the contract, to the point he has said he's willing to do what is best for the team, even if it is taking a pay cut. If the Saints decide to move on from Derek, his future looks to a transition towards becoming a journeyman backup. We will never know just how good Derek Carr could have been. If he were to land in a more stable franchise from the start, he may have been the top 5 quarterback, but the providence of God has placed him where he has been throughout his career, on the field, and has been a roller coaster, but off of it. He has been an incredible dad, husband, and leader of his family, and a genuine teammate to all of his brothers throughout his years in the league. Thank you for watching The Halftime Show.